This is the listening test of TOEFL Primary Step 2, Test Book Number 2. Welcome to the listening test of TOEFL Primary. We will listen and answer questions. Let's get ready. Find the listening part of your answer sheet. On this test, each question has only one answer. Fill in only one circle for each question. Part 1. Fill in the correct circles on your answer sheet. Let's do an example. Number 1. Listen to a teacher. I'm going to hang your paintings on the wall. Please bring your picture to me if you are done. Make sure that all the paint has dried. Now, answer this question What will the teacher do next? Look at the pictures. So, which picture shows? I'm going to hang your paintings on the wall. Please bring your picture to me if you are done. Make sure that all the paint has dried. The answer is B because the teacher is hanging up the students' paintings. Fill in B on your answer sheet. Did you fill in B on your answer sheet? Do you understand the directions? Ask your teacher if you need help. Now you do it. Number two. Listen to a mother talking to her daughter. Could you go watch your baby brother? I have to do the laundry now. I will make you a sandwich after I finish. What does the mother tell her daughter to do? Go on to the next page. Number three. Listen to a police officer talking to some students. There are some street safety rules you need to know. Do not go with strangers. And do not use your cell phone while walking on the street. What does the police officer tell the students not to do? Number four. Listen to a teacher. Welcome back to school. I hope you enjoyed your summer vacation. I am going to hand out the class schedule for this semester. What will the teacher do next? Number five. Listen to a boy talking to his younger brother. I won the spelling bee in my English class today, and I got a dozen notebooks as my prize. I will give you half of my notebooks. What will the boy do next? Go on to the next page. Number six. Listen to a teacher. Before we enter the museum, Let's go through the rules we have to follow. Do not run or make any loud noises inside. Eating snacks in the museum is not allowed either. There will be a quiz tomorrow about what you see today, so please pay attention. What will the students do at school the next day? Number seven. Listen to a teacher. Walk on the right when you use the stairs. That way you won't bump into people coming in the opposite direction. What does the teacher tell the students to do? Go on to the next page. Part 2. Listen to a conversation and answer the question. Fill in the correct circle on your answer sheet. Let's do an example. Number eight. Listen to a conversation between a teacher and a student. Listen for the answer to this question What is the boy going to do in the evening? Congratulations on winning the tennis match. Are you going to celebrate your victory with your family tonight? Yes, we are going out for a nice dinner this evening, and we're going to see a movie tomorrow. That sounds nice. I haven't relaxed much lately 
because I've had to practice every day. So I want to hang out with my friends and eat whatever food I want for the next few weeks. What is the boy going to do in the evening? The choices are A. Go see a movie. B. Have dinner with his family. C. Hang out with his friends. Fill in the correct circle on your answer sheet. The answer is B, because the boy says, Yes, we are going out for a nice dinner this evening. Fill in B on your answer sheet. Do you understand the directions? Ask your teacher if you need help. Now you do it. Number nine. Listen to a conversation between two students at school. Listen for the answer to this question. What does the boy agree to do? Hi, Jonathan. Yesterday, when you weren't in school, the teacher told us about the food drive that will take place next week. What is a food drive? It is an event to collect food items for people in need. Some of us asked the teacher if we could also donate some food. Would you like to join us? Okay, that sounds wonderful. What does the boy agree to do? A. Go for a drive with his friends. B. Get some food from his friends. C. Donate some food. Number 10. Listen to a conversation between two friends in the school cafeteria. Listen for the answer to this question. When the boy says, She said that I eat like a horse. What does he mean? I'm hungry. You just had lunch, and I saw you eating more than usual. I know. Since I started playing sports after school every day, I seem to be hungry all the time. I guess your body needs extra energy. I've been eating a lot at home, too. My mom went grocery shopping three times last week because of me. She said that I eat like a horse. I can imagine. When the boy says, She said that I eat like a horse. What does he mean? A. His mom thinks he eats a lot. B. His mom thinks he spends too much money. C. His mom thinks he likes horses. Number 11. Listen to a conversation between a student and a teacher. Listen for the answer to this question Why did the girl go to the music room? Hi, Judy. What are you doing here? Hi, Mrs. Notes. I came to find my flute. Your flute? Didn't you take it with you after class yesterday? I thought I did, but I guess I was in such a hurry to get changed for PE class that I didn't realize that I didn't have it with me until after school. I didn't see any instruments left behind in the music room yesterday. Someone from the class after yours might have taken it by accident. I will go ask the students. Thank you very much. Why did the girl go to the music room? A. Her next class was music. B. She went there to look for her instrument. C. She went there to get changed. Go on to the next page. Number 12. Listen to a conversation between two friends at school. Listen for the answer to this question What will the boy do the next day? I saw you fighting with Sam. What happened? We were playing a game, and when it was my turn to play, he skipped my turn. Is that why you punched him? I kept telling him it was my turn, 
but then he started calling me names and wouldn't apologize. It was wrong of Sam to do that, but you shouldn't have punched him. You are both in big trouble now. I know. I will apologize to him tomorrow. What will the boy do the next day? A. Start a fight with Sam. B. Play with Sam. C. Say sorry to Sam. Number 13. Listen to a conversation between a boy and a store assistant in a store. Listen for the answer to this question. What is the boy going to do next? Hello, how can I help you? I want to buy a birthday gift for my mom. Okay, is there anything you want to get in particular? I'm not sure, but I know that she likes flowers. Then how about getting her a bouquet of flowers? We have some fresh flowers in the flower section. Why don't you go over and see if you can find something your mom would like? What is the boy going to do next? A. Look at some flowers. B. Buy a birthday gift for his dad. C. Plant some flowers. Number 14. Listen to a conversation between a boy and his father. Listen for the answer to this question. What will the father do with his son? Dad, do you know how to play baseball? Yes. I was on the baseball team in high school. I was chosen as the best player in my senior year. Great! Can you teach me how to play baseball? Our school's baseball team is looking for more players, and I want to join the team, but I will have to pass the tryouts. Sure. Why don't we go over some baseball rules during lunch? Then we can go to the park and play in the afternoon. I'm sure you will be able to make the team. Thanks, Dad. What will the father do with his son? A. Go see a baseball game. B. Teach him how to play baseball. C. Visit his school to meet his baseball coach. Go on to the next page. Part 3 Listen and answer the question. Fill in the correct circle on your answer sheet. Let's do an example. Number 15 Listen to a phone message. Hi, Jason. It's Mike. I forgot to ask you what time the school soccer match starts this Friday. Call me back when you get home from soccer practice. Why did Mike call? The choices are A. To ask Jason about the time of the soccer match. B. To ask Jason to come and watch the game. C. To ask Jason to play soccer with him. Fill in the correct circle on your answer sheet. The answer is A. To ask Jason about the time of the soccer match. Fill in A on your answer sheet. Do you understand the directions? Ask your teacher if you need help. Now you do it. Number 16. Listen to a phone message. Hi, Elaine. This is your art teacher, Mrs. Blue. I found the design book you asked me about. I will keep it in my office, and you can come by any time tomorrow if you want to borrow it. What did Mrs. Blue call about? A. Her art room. B. Her job. C. A design book. Number 17. Listen to a teacher talking to his class. There is going to be a prize-giving ceremony for the science contest tomorrow morning. I know many of you put in a lot of effort into the contest. 
I hope that some of you will win prizes. I wish all of you good luck, and I will see you tomorrow. What is the teacher talking about? A. A science test. B. Next month's science fair. C. An award ceremony. Number 18. Listen to a phone message. Hi, Aunt Lucy. It's Leah. Mom's birthday is next week, and I want to make a special birthday cake for her. Can you help me make it this Friday? The cakes you make are really delicious, so I really hope you can help me. Mom's going to love it. What does Leah want to do? A. Buy a birthday cake. B. Make a birthday cake. C. Draw a birthday cake. Go on to the next page. Number 19. Listen to a phone message. Hi, I am trying to log in to your store's website, but it's not working. I need to order some items today, as I need them urgently. I entered my ID and password and clicked on the submit button, but nothing happened after that. Could you help me fix the problem? Thanks. What does the man want to do? A. Get a new ID and password. B. Create a website. C. Order products online. Number 20. Listen to a phone message. Hi, Dave. It's Malcolm. I am going to sign up for tennis classes during summer vacation. Would you like to join me? It will be fun. The classes are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. From 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at school. I think learning a new sport will be a great way to spend the vacation. Let me know if you are interested. Why did Malcolm call? A. To ask Dave about the schedule for the tennis class. B. To invite Dave to the party this Friday. C. To ask Dave to take tennis lessons. Number 21. Listen to a phone message. Hi, Laura. It's Charles. Our art club is meeting tomorrow after school. Sarah told me that the art room is under construction at the moment, so we will be meeting in the music room. Please bring your art supplies to the music room tomorrow at 4 o'clock. See you then. What will happen the next day? A. The art club will meet in the art room. B. The construction will be finished. C. The art club will have a meeting. Number 22. Listen to a phone message. Hi, Miranda. This is Sophie. I lost my pencil case. You know the blue one with little yellow bees on it? I think I may have left it at your house after our study session. Can you look around your room and let me know if you find it? Thank you. See you at school tomorrow. Why did Sophie call? A. To borrow a pencil case from Miranda. B. To ask Miranda to study with her. C. To tell Miranda that her pencil case is missing. Go on to the next page. Part 4. Listen to a story about Tim. As Tim got off the bus, the rain started to pour. Tim looked around, and many people were running without umbrellas. Just like Tim, Many of them hadn't expected the rain that day. Oh no, I didn't bring my umbrella. I'm going to get soaked, Tim thought to himself. Tim held his backpack tightly and started to run. 
When he was standing at the crosswalk, he saw a man holding a bunch of umbrellas. It was Mr. Ludwig from the jewelry store. He was giving out umbrellas to people who did not have them. When Tim was running across the crosswalk, Mr. Ludwig saw him and called out to him. Here, take one of these, said Mr. Ludwig. Thank you very much, Tim told Mr. Ludwig and took an umbrella. Tim had seen him giving out umbrellas to people from time to time, but he never thought that he would need Mr. Ludwig's help. The next day, Tim visited Mr. Ludwig's jewelry store with his mom. Hello, Mr. Ludwig. I am here to return the umbrella you lent me yesterday. Thank you very much. I made you some cookies as a token of my appreciation, said Tim, giving Mr. Ludwig a plate of cookies. You know, I have given out umbrellas many times, but you are the first person to return one. Thank you for returning my umbrella and bringing me yummy cookies, said Mr. Ludwig with a big smile. Now answer the questions. Number 23. What did Tim need when he got off the bus? A. His wallet. B. A water bottle. C. An umbrella. Number 24. What does Mr. Ludwig do for a living? A. He sells umbrellas. B. He sells jewelry. C. He sells cookies. Number 25. Why did Mr. Ludwig give Tim an umbrella? A. Tim needed it because of the rain. B. Mr. Ludwig was returning Tim's umbrella. C. Tim bought the umbrella from Mr. Ludwig. Number 26. Why did Tim bring cookies to Mr. Ludwig? A. He wanted to say thank you. B. He wanted to sell them. C. He wanted to exchange them for an umbrella. Go on to the next page. Listen to a story about Amy and Kiki. Amy is six years old and she loves birds. On her sixth birthday, Amy's mom bought her a parrot. Amy named her Kiki and she spent hours taking care of her every day. Kiki was a clever parrot. She could talk and sing. Amy loved singing with Kiki. Amy brought Kiki wherever she went. Amy loved Kiki so much that she shared everything with Kiki, including her snacks and chocolate. One morning, Amy got up and fed Kiki, but Kiki didn't want to eat. Kiki also would not talk or sing. Kiki just stood at the corner of her cage and did not move. Amy was very worried. Mom, something is wrong. Kiki is not eating her food. She's not even moving said Amy with a worried look on her face. That's strange. We better bring Kiki to the vet, said Amy's mom. Amy and her mom took Kiki to the vet that afternoon. The doctor examined Kiki carefully and asked Amy what she had been feeding Kiki. Seeds, nuts, vegetables, and chocolate, replied Amy. Parrots cannot eat chocolate and sweets. It makes them sick. I'm going to give you some medicine for Kiki. Kiki will get better in a few days. Remember not to feed her chocolate again, said the doctor firmly. Amy went home feeling very sad. She was very sorry that she made Kiki sick. I will read more books about birds so that I know how to take care of you. I promise not to make you sick again, she said to Kiki. Now. Answer the questions. Number 27. What did Amy get for her sixth birthday? A. A puppy. 
B. A bird. C. A kitten. Number 28. What did Amy not do with Kiki? A. They shared some snacks together. B. They did homework together. C. They sang together. Number 29. Why was Kiki sick? A. Amy didn't feed Kiki for many days. B. Amy fed Kiki some food that Kiki shouldn't eat. C. Amy kept Kiki in the cage for a long time. Number 30. What did the doctor tell Amy? A. That she should not feed Kiki chocolate. B. That she should bring Kiki to the park. C. That Kiki should eat more sweets. Go on to the next page. Listen to a teacher giving instructions. Okay, class. Yesterday we talked about natural disasters, such as earthquakes, tornadoes, floods, and volcanic eruptions. Today we are going to do a fun experiment by making a tornado in a bottle. I am going to explain how we can make our own mini tornado, so please pay attention. First, we need water, a clear plastic bottle with a cap, glitter, and dishwashing liquid. Next, fill the plastic bottle three quarters full with water. Then add a few drops of dishwashing liquid. After that, sprinkle in a few pinches of glitter and close the bottle with the cap. Close the cap tightly and make sure that it doesn't leak. Lastly, Turn the bottle upside down and quickly spin the bottle in a circular motion. You will see a mini tornado forming in the water. In this experiment, when you spin the bottle in a circular motion, it creates a water vortex. A vortex is a mass of wind or water that spins quickly and pulls things into its center. Vortexes can be found in tornadoes and hurricanes. Now, I want the leader of each group to come up and get the materials you need for this experiment. Now, answer the questions. Number 31. What did the class talk about yesterday? A. Weather forecasts. B. Insects. C. Natural disasters. Number 32. What is needed for the experiment? A. Glitter. B. A bar of soap. C. A plastic bottle without a cap. Number 33. What is true about a vortex? A. It can be seen in volcanic eruptions. B. It pulls things into its center. C. It stretches easily. Go on to the next page. Listen to a teacher in PE class. Today we are going to practice shooting a basketball. Some of you might already know how to play basketball, but for those who have never played basketball, you don't have to worry about not having any experience. Even experienced players sometimes have a hard time shooting the ball into the hoop. I am going to show you the easiest way to make a perfect shot, so please watch and listen carefully. Look at where I am standing now. I am standing about four to five feet from the basketball hoop. Dribble the ball a few times to feel the bounce of the ball. Now, 
Shoot the ball toward the hoop by bringing the ball to your chest level and extending your arms straight out. Next, try shooting from waist level. When you are used to shooting the ball from the two positions, try shooting the ball while jumping slightly. Please line up now. When it is your turn, I want you to stand four to five feet from the basketball hoop. I will throw the ball to you. Dribble the ball a few times and shoot from chest level the first time and from waist level the second time. Let's begin. Now answer the questions. Number 34. What did the teacher talk about? A. How to kick a soccer ball. B. How to shoot an ice hockey puck. C. How to shoot a basketball. Number 35. What did the teacher show? A. Where to stand before shooting. B. Where to go after shooting. C. What to say while shooting. Number 36. What will the students do next? A. Practice shooting. B. Watch a basketball game. C. Change their uniforms. Go on to the next page. Listen to a teacher giving a history lesson. In the last 100 years, there have been a lot of changes, especially in the things we use daily. I am going to show you a picture of something used in the past. Can anyone tell me what this is? It looks like a wooden board. Yes, it is a wooden board. Can anyone guess what it was used for? Maybe it was a board that was used for writing in a classroom. I don't think it was used for writing in a classroom because it doesn't have a flat surface to write on. That's a good point. Well, this is actually a washboard. People in the past didn't have washing machines. They had to wash their clothes by hand. Clothes were scrubbed against the rough surface of the board to remove the dirt on the clothes. Washing clothes with a washboard took a lot of time and energy. Now we no longer need washboards as there are machines that can clean and even dry our clothes. What are they? Washing machines. Very good. We are continuously developing and creating new things using things from the past. You will be surprised by how different some things today used to look like in the past. For your assignment, I want you to choose three objects that you have. And find out the history of them. Please draw a picture or bring a photograph to show to the class. Now, answer the questions. Number 37. What is the lesson about? A. Things that have changed over time. B. Things that money cannot buy. C. Things that are unique and unusual. Number 38. Which is a characteristic of a washboard? A. It has an engine. B. It dries wet clothes. C. It has a rough side. Number 39. What do the students have to do? A. Research on the history of some objects. B. Think of a new object they want to invent. C. Bring a photo of their ancestors. Stop. You finished the listening test. This is the end of the practice test.